This video is brought to you by Dynamic Custom Beadworks. Head over to DynamicBeadworks.com now to get your own custom video game sprite. Hey guys, Jay Coon here. Well, it's been a couple days since EVO wrapped up, and there were a couple games that I got to mess around with that actually haven't come out yet. Obviously, I played Street Fighter V, but with the beta coming out probably by the time this video does, I feel like it would be a little pointless to talk about something that's already been covered in great length already. So instead, I'll be talking about two other gems that I ran into on the show floor. One was Dragon Ball Z Extreme Budoden, which I'll cover in another video, and the other was this game, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. Now this is a series I've been a fan of for a long time. I was a big fan of the show, and even imported a good chunk of the games. For the longest time, the series had two different titles, Clash of Ninja and Ultimate Ninja. And about a year into the PlayStation 3 lifespan, we saw the emergence of a third title, which was Ultimate Ninja Storm. This is where they introduced the third-person perspective arena-style fighting that was completely over-the-top and stylized. Now, the sequel is where I really started getting into the series, since this is where they introduced online play. So it gave me the ability to play people from all over, and even getting to the point that I was playing in tournaments at anime conventions that I was attending at the time. Now, there were three more games since the release of two. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Generations, 3, and 3 Full Burst. And with these three games, they did something that ultimately made me lose interest in it. In the second game, you were able to block and substitute yourself in the event of being attacked, and if you timed it right, you would perform what is called a substitution jutsu, which would basically negate the hit and have you appear behind the opponent. With Generations 3 in full burst, they added what was called a substitution bar that would regenerate over the course of the match. But the big problem with this is that the matches would essentially boil down to whoever used the bar first would pretty much lose. Because once that bar was depleted, you really didn't have a way to avoid taking either insane amounts of damage or insane amounts of chip damage if the opponent went on the attack. Now, with having just played a couple matches, I can see where they've improved a few things that really make it a better experience and possibly a more creditable fighter in the FGC. They still do the substitution bar thing, but if in the event that the bar is depleted, you can actually hold down the block button and move the left stick to perform an omnidirectional dash to help you avoid attacks. So you don't have to eat all that damage and actually have more than one tool to defend yourself this time around. Secondly, the fight is separated into rounds to create a more recognizable fighting style that we're used to seeing in other fighting games. And finally, Ultimate Ninja Storm always operated in teams of three, a single fighter and two assists. Now you can actually change characters in the middle of the fight and give your main character a breather. So it would seem like three very subtle changes, but it's actually changes that make a world of difference in improving the series and possibly making a more enjoyable fighter. Now, the game doesn't drop until the fall, but once it does, I may be picking this up again, and you may be seeing a lot of it on the Twitch and YouTube channel. Because, I gotta admit, this was a very enjoyable experience, and it kind of rekindled my interest in the series as a whole. But that's all I got for right now, so stay tuned for more updates coming soon.